This is where we left off um, at the end of the last video. We were talking about monomers and polymers. One of the things that you're going to need to know about the four biomolecules that we're talking about <clears throat> is out of the three that are properly considered polymers, what are the monomers that uh, construct them? So keep focused on that. Um, when it comes to proteins, that is the polymer and the monomers from which proteins are constructed are called amino acids. When it comes to complex carbohydrates like starches, their monomers are monosaccharides like individual glucose molecules. So we will talk about that as we go. But let's get going with the simplest of the biomolecules, which are the carbohydrates. The name carbohydrate um, tells you the basic formula for any individual carbohydrate. So um, it turns out that if you have a carbon and a water, that would be carbohydrate, right? So when I say that carbohydrate, that's the basic formula for a carbohydrate, what I mean is that for every carbon, there is one oxygen and two hydrogens in a typical carbohydrate. One of the things you'll need to do on exam one is identify what kind of biomolecule I've got depicted. If I've got something written like this, I want you to know that you're looking at a carbohydrate. Why would you know that? Well, you can count the number of oxygens here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the number of carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Same number of carbons and oxygens. That would tell you right there that you're not looking at a lipid. The fact that you've got carbons and oxygens and hydrogens and nothing else means you're not looking at a protein or uh, a nucleic acid. So carbohydrate. Now, when we're talking about carbohydrates, we're talking about the simplest of the biomolecules. And when we're talking about carbohydrates, um, we could be talking about very simple carbohydrates which are often referred to as sugars or complex carbohydrates, which include starches. Let's look at these two very simple carbohydrates. And when it comes to carbohydrates, this one here on the left is a good example of a monosaccharide. Monosaccharide, mono means one, saccharide means sugar, monosaccharide means one sugar ring. And as I said in the last video, when you take uh, uh, these simple carbohydrates and put them into water, they will form these ring kind of structures. And that's how we like to look at them from a biologist's point of view. So a single ring is a uh, monosaccharide. If you take two of these guys and put them together, you will make another sugar called a disaccharide. Now, is this a polymer? See, I, I don't know if technically it qualifies, but it certainly is a larger molecule made out of one, two monomers, right? So this is sucrose. Sucrose is table sugar. If I were to write the general formula for glucose, glucose is C6H12O6. But if I were to write the... Um, the molecular formula for fructose, it is also C6H12O6. Because the difference between glucose, this is glucose, and fructose, this is fructose, the difference is not in how many carbons and oxygens and stuff they have. The difference is how they are arranged. Remember the way things are put together and the ultimate shapes <clears throat> that they have is, um, everything when it comes to the molecules of life. Ready? Now, complex carbohydrates include starches. So let's just look at the simple kind of starch that's in a potato. Look at this, that's a glucose, that's a glucose, that's a glucose, lots and lots and lots of glucoses all stuck together. That makes a molecule of starch. 
By the way, if you eat starch, like let's imagine I had oatmeal this morning with no sugar on it. <clears throat> yeah, let's just imagine that. <laughs> but if I did, um, when my body is digesting the um, starch, then it is going to cut it apart right here. And what goes into my bloodstream will be glucose. So whenever you're eating carbohydrate, it will make the level of glucose in your bloodstream go up. Now that doesn't mean that eating sugar is the same as eating starch. It's not the same as eating starch. And I do not defend my sweet tooth in that way, right? Things are more complicated than that. And I think we will have a chance to talk about it when we get to the digestive system. Now, I want you to know this name of this molecule, glycogen. Many uh, textbooks will refer to glycogen as animal starch. It is simple enough that it should be considered a starch. And glycogen is the starch that your body makes whenever there are excess glucose molecules around so that you can store them up for later, right? So what goes into my bloodstream are going to be individual little glucoses, right? And if there are too many of them because, well, the truth is there's always too many in an individual meal, right? We want a place to be able to tuck them away so that when it's been a couple hours since we ate, we can have access to those glucoses again. And the way the human body tucks the glucose away for the short term is in the form of glycogen. You should know for exam one, that glycogen is a carbohydrate, it's a complex carbohydrate, it's made out of glucose monomers, and it is our body's way of storing sugar molecules kind of for short term, right? Um, it's not the best way to store uh, calories of energy for, of the human body in the long term because glycogen in the human body weighs a lot, um, but it's, it's good for between meals, right? Let's talk about cellulose. Uh, cellulose is also a complex carbohydrate, but cellulose is so complicated a molecule that the human body actually cannot uh, digest it. So for example, mm, cellulose, if you are wearing anything made out of cotton, then you are, or rayon, you are wearing cellulose. And it's a carbohydrate. And yet, if you were to eat it, you would not get any calories from it. And the reason is that even though it's a complex carbohydrate, when we come to its organic chemistry, the human body doesn't have uh, enzymes that can liberate individual glucose molecules from it. So for humans, all of the complex carbohydrates that we consume in our food that we cannot digest, uh, we call that fiber. Yeah, not all carbohydrates are digestible by humans. So wood, you're, if you're writing on paper, you're writing on carbohydrate. That's weird, right? But if you ate it, you could not get calories from it. Also, the uh, exoskeleton of insects and, and crabs and lobsters is also complex carbohydrate. But again, we can't get any calories from that. So I mentioned enzymes, and you've got a lab on enzymes coming up. I think it's week two, but I'm not sure, okay? So um, we'll talk more about enzymes. You'll have a lab on enzymes. Enzymes are special proteins that work like little tiny robots. And enzymes, just in general, can take two things and put them together, or can take one big thing and rip it apart. I said that the reason that when you or I ate a paper that we could not get any energy out of that paper, even though the paper is made out of carbohydrate, the reason is that we don't have any little protein robots, any enzymes that can break it apart, right? Breaking things apart 
is a catabolic reaction. Putting things together is an anabolic reaction. Uh, for exam one, you need to know two specific types of biochemical reactions. Before we talk about dehydration synthesis, let's just start in general. Good, I got some room to write here. Let's just talk in general about um, how to understand um, biochemical reactions the way they're drawn out, okay? If I write this A plus B, an arrow pointing to the right, and the letters A, B stuck together, what I am saying as a chemical reaction is that the stuff on the left side of the arrow, that is the before, that's what we start with, and then the, the arrow is magic happens here, <laughs> and the right side of the arrow, that is what we end up with. So the left side of the arrow is, when it comes to enzymatic reaction, we usually call them substrates. This is plural, but we can also call it reactants, reactant. I need a better writing pen here. And the stuff on the right side, this is going to be the product of this reaction, right? Now, enzymes can be put two places in these biochemical formulas. I'll let your lab instructor tell you more about this. But before we leave this, I should tell you that if I could also say A plus B turns into A and B. And again, in this formula, the stuff on the left would be the substrate and the stuff on the right would be the products, okay? So stuff on the left, substrates, reactants, stuff on the right, product, the arrow divides it, magic happens. Oops. So let's look at one of those reactions. This reaction you need to know is dehydration synthesis. Dehydration synthesis tells you two things. Synthesis means it is a, a, an anabolic reaction. Let me write that down. Synthesis means, oops, Synthesis means it is an anabolic reaction. Anabolic reaction. Anabolic reaction meaning you're taking two small things, making one big thing. One of the ways you can recognize dehydration synthesis in your lab manual is if you start with two things and you end up with one big thing, it was a synthesis reaction, right? The only kind of synthesis reaction you're responsible for recognizing is dehydration synthesis. Why is it called dehydration? Dehydration means that uh, the water is being taken out of something. And with dehydration synthesis, here we've got an example of taking glucose and fructose, each of these monosaccharides, and making sucrose a disaccharide, right? Um, it, and in order to create a bond between the glucose here and the fructose here, you can see that there are a bunch of atoms in the way. And those atoms that are in the way, those atoms that are in the way end up being one oxygen and two hydrogens. So when a covalent bond is formed between these two, these two monosaccharides, you end up creating a bond and you had to get rid of a water. And that is why this reaction is called dehydration dehydration synthesis. We will start here at the beginning of the next lecture.